All right, y'all. Uh, the last part of our uh, KGF Chapter 1 reaction series here. So since you're watching this on YouTube, you will see a cut-down version of our reaction because we're only allowed to show you a limited amount of picture-in-picture. -picture. But if you want to watch the whole movie with us without the cuts, head over to our Patreon page, patreon.com slash uh, But you will need your own copy of the movie. We are watching it through Amazon Prime. You'll need your own copy of the film so you can open it up in an adjacent window to our reaction. And it's like you're watching it with two of your favorite pals from the internet. So, without further ado, let's jump right back into this. Here we go. Oh. Mm. Damn! Yeah, they, they, they Damn, they cool off the... Damn, he broke the hammer off in your ass. Good lord. Mama, here come that man. <laughs> Damn. He's like a... It's like oh, a monster. You got the red hot poker piece of steel. Mm. <laughs> the match is going in and out's a nice touch. I like that. <laughs> I love that. Well done. <laughs> Nice! <laughs> yes! I feel like that was inspired by Batman Begins. Damn! I mean, it's like a horror movie. That's what I was saying. Mmm. Pink. Blink. Mmm. Yeah, give me all that, old boy. All that. Oh. What a shovel, though. That's just great. I love it. Oh. Uh, oh. Oh, all the sound nice. effects. Oh, oh. Oh, oh man, cr them crossing the 180 de degree line kind of throws me a little bit sometimes. Mm. <laughs> Poor old dude. You're all right, man. One man to tell the story <laughs> for the procession. Mm. It's like on some old Ben Hur shit right now. Golly. <laughs> they just come out the arena just like <laughs> that moment where he was like you know damn them gangsters right I'm here for y'all you remember uh, Troy it's been a minute since I watched we, we, it, but yeah. He went to the gate and snatched up Hector. No, it's, drug I, him behind his chariot. <laughs> yeah. You about to get some street justice. <laughs> it's all nice and tight. 
Oh, this is not gonna be good for you. ಸಿಗ್ನಲ್ ಕಳಿಸಿದಾನ work now, huh? Yep. Oh, he killed him, huh? Now in den paristhiti. A janra den paristhiti. Right? Choices. Jaga yenta derle. Alliro jana hegadru irli. Hogira on nanna shikanta. Now she's like that's my man now. Aya padod bitti nen madidivi navu. That's true. You scared your entire time, huh? Jana Jasti, alert agiri. Chikke juwan ra hatta turgu yaru hog bardo. Hogi. Jaatre lodi tena uno. Hmm. Yaru upar short circuit bardo dro abili ke na daati a tunnel inda illi vargu bardo dekhe tumba samya beko. Ashtra leni wo alert mandi dekhe armane leni da guard sella chikke juwan ro matra bandu aur na jaatre vargu escort mandi dar sir. Yo, there's like nine minutes of movie left. They gotta wrap this up. <laughs> I'm like, how are they gonna wrap this story? <laughs> I mean I know it's chapter 1. I've seen it before. Yeah. But like Now when you were saying Temple of Doom earlier, this is really giving me Temple of Doom vibes. Especially with all the firework. Niven yojane madbedi sir. Chikkej mandru jatra mugiskan mane ek bar Australia matte idi armane na japti odustivi. Aa murjana kaidilo na munda karkon barro. Okay, so that's who he was feeding for the sacrifice. Okay. Those are the three guys he kept feeding. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Ugh. He's one of the prisoners. Yeah. <laughs> I'm back. Oh. Where'd you get the sword from? Doesn't matter. Got him. And mission accomplished. Yo, my man, free the people is still. <laughs> He's still stuck by his word, dog. Come cut con hoke tya. Upne hoko. Ayyo sivna. Mm. Gaid na hor tak puta sa. ರಾಜಕೀಯ ಬರಲ್ಲ ಅಂತ ಹೇಳಿದ ಸೆಲೆಬ್ರೇಷನ್ ಮೋಡ್ ಇಮಿಡಿಯಟ್ಲಿ ಸಮುದ್ರ ಇನ್ನೆಲ್ಲೋ ಇದೆ ಅಂತ ಹುಡ್ಕೊಂಡು ಹೋದ ಗರುಡನ್ ನೋಡಿದಾಗ ರಾಕೆಟ್ ಕನ್ಫರ್ಮ್ ಆಯಿತು ಹಿಯರ್ ಇಸ್ ಅ ಮ್ಯಾನ್ ಹು ಕಮ್ಸ್ ಫ್ರಾಮ್ ದಟ್ ಪವರ್ಫುಲ್ ಪ್ಲೇಸ್ ಅದಕ್ಕೆ ಅವಕಾಶ ಇದ್ರು ಅವನನ್ನು ಮುಗಿಸಾಕ್ಲಿಲ್ಲ ಯೋ ಗ್ವಾರ್ ವಾಸ್ ಡೌಪ್ ಡೌ ಮ್ಯಾ ಹಿ ವಾಸ್ ಅ ಡೌಪ್ ವಿಲನ್ ಕೆಜಿ ಎಫ್ ಪಡ್ಕೊಳ್ಳೋಕೆ ಒಂದು ಸೈನ್ಯಾನೇ ಬೇಕಿತ್ತು ಹಿ ಗಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಅವರೇ ಅದೇ ಅಲ್ಲಿ ಧೈರ್ಯ ತುಂಬಿಸಿ ಅವರನ್ನೆಲ್ಲ ಸೈನಿಕರನ್ನಾಗಿ ಮಾಡ್ಕೊಂಡ ಡ್ಯಾಮ್ ಅದೇ ಹಿಂದೆ ಇರೋ ಸಾವಿರ ಜನ ಧೈರ್ಯ ಬಂದ್ರೆ ಪ್ರಪಂಚನೇ ಗೆಲ್ಬೋದು ಶುರುವಾಗ್ತಿದೆ 
<laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> Yo, I'm here for it. Oh my gosh, that's 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 good. It's it's really good. It's just fast. For me, it's treating you like you got ADHD. It does not want you to get bored. Even during the slow moments, I, I counted the cuts. Yeah. And I think I think the longest one, even during the slow part, I think the longest cut I saw was maybe like 10 seconds. Mm -hmm. And the rest was like three and four second cuts, man. Yeah. I was like, it's <laughs> the team of editors, I hope you got paid. <laughs> Cause you guys were busy. Between the color correction and the cuts, yeah. and then making sure you got the proper selects, you earned your check on this one. Yeah, editor editor turned to Prashant Neal, the director, and goes, okay, so you got a lot of footage here. What, what, what would you like to use? He goes, well, all of it. <laughs> 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 Producers like we gotta make this a shorter movie though, like two, two, uh, two and a half hours. We can't do three. We gotta use all the shots. That's my one agreement. <laughs> use all the shots. <laughs> <laughs> he has con check up. Yeah. Yo, all the shots. Yeah. We can't use all the shots. It's physically impossible. All the shots. And then, it's and physically then not, not impossible. Just the shots, physically though. impossible. <laughs> you watch. Move aside, editor. And, I'm gonna get all these fucking shots and, in here. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I feel bad for in this entire movie is whoever the first AD is because I can't imagine how you had to rush every single setup. Based off of the shot selection that we've seen, this movie looks like it should have taken an entire year to shoot. That many setups. Yeah. And each setup, in case you don't know, each setup is when you have to get the crew, arrange the lights, set up the framing, make sure that the camera has the proper lens, make sure everybody has their lines, everybody's hitting their marks. All of this at the exact same time. And a lot of times you're moving the entire set around in order to get these shots and that's just for one one of those little cuts that you see that lasts for like three seconds is an entire setup all, all so those, i'm like all those extras as well yeah man this was a a massive undertaking in order to keep that pace and maintain it for two and a half hours mm -hmm. i know i'm talking a lot i'm just i'm, nah. I'm excited i'm just that couldn't happen on an american set and it not take like a year and a half to shoot that. they was just cranking them out bro they was like set up we're gonna get two takes you need to get this in two takes and be done. I have some thoughts I'd like to share, but I want to hear yours first because I've already done a review on this. Okay. So my thoughts right. is like a re-review. So I want to hear what you have to say first. Well, here's the thing. And I did a bit of a cheat because I did have to take a look at, at some of the wiki, but I just skimmed it. I just scanned it. I couldn't get into the into the details of it because I just didn't have time. And that helped because if I didn't have it, the story moves at such a pace that it's difficult to keep up with. Maybe if I was maybe listening to an English dub, it might've been a little bit easier, but it's hard to kind of like soak in the visuals because the cuts are so fast and you'll miss a cut trying to read what's down there like like as you're reading four cuts will go through right so by the time you <laughs> exactly. get to reading what it is you've exactly. already missed that was, you've already missed the context that was my right experience too yeah um, fortunately you know i suffer from adhd so i can process like really really quickly but even still i was lagging behind a lot of times the one thing that i do love about it is that like it forces you to have to pay attention there's there's no moments where you're just kind of like you're, you're gonna drift because it's yeah. It's, it's, it's just that fast. I love the framing, like the, the, I know we talk about this a lot. Every frame is really beautiful. Every frame tells you something. The drawback is, is that I don't get enough time to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. I see it in a moment and then it's just gone. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, if I could just come back here to this moment and maybe extend some of those cuts, even by two or three seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even, which is like a 50% increase. <laughs> even if you extend just some of those cuts, maybe by like two or three seconds, I could like really soak it in. The use of colors is really good. I love the filters. It puts you in a really surreal place. Some of it felt very comic booky. That's why uh, we were referencing a little bit of, of Zack Snyder. Anime too. Uh, because his frames it's definitely got a lot of strong anime references. The, the director and the director your photography have a strong passion for action films. They pulled from a lot of different places and it worked. Like the anime references that we were talking about earlier was a lot of fun. Yeah. A lot of it is super surreal, but that's fine as well because the pace keeps you going. And it, it feels like a comic book. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't feel like a documentary or anything like that's not supposed to. It feels like I'm watching a, a historical comic book. Uh, the comic book by Frank Miller, I think his name. I think I may be wrong on that. Yeah, 300 Frank is no, a yeah, yeah, Frank example Miller. Frank of Miller. that. The character is so over the top, but so good, but not over the top that it's corny. There's, there's a really, really fine line where you can get into the point where it's like, this this is just, it's not even fun anymore because he's doing all of these absolutely extraordinary things. And it maintains his fun because the, he finds unique ways in order to become a badass. That scene in the mine where the matches kept going out was just great because it changed the entire tone. It started feeling like a horror movie 
and I'm like, oh my god, am I looking at you know Jason Voorhees or Freddy Krueger, you know, trying to get his kills, or or the or better yet, the predator. The kids being kind of like soothsayers of the entire village was a lot of fun too, because like because that you do need. I know we use the term levity a lot because it can be if if you focus too much on action, it can come across as one tone. So the moments that you get to breathe are in moments like the kids. Yeah. Moments with the narrator who does a really good job of kind of filling in the gaps, even though he moves really, really fast. I'm not going to lie. I probably processed maybe a little over half of it, 60, 70% of it. And the rest, I just kind of had to kind of like piecemeal in my head as we're, as, as we're going on this journey. But the narrator does a little half decent, a pretty half decent job with whoever the voice is. It's just, it's really good too. The voice of the narrator, just, it just really catches you. Overall, I really liked it. I wish they probably added about 30 more minutes. Yeah to let some of it breathe, yeah. to let a portion of it. And one more thing, and I'm loving the arc because we got a kid who's born into destiny, who's born at the same time that the minds are being made, who had a mother that only had a short amount of time to impart wisdom on it, gave him a goal that he sticks to, told him that, yo, this is your goal, but how you get there is going to be on you. Let me just give you some, some cool little nuggets. Ends up turning into a life of crime as a result of this path, but still has a piece of humanity that's still left somewhere. And, and Maybe that's attributed to his code, which is attributed to his mother. But then he really gets to find out who he really is when he get a chance to meet people and see what it is that they're going through. But at the same time, he still doesn't lose his gangster mentality. He still gets the job done and he still makes an example out of those who cross him. He's a hell of a hero, dog. He's And then, and then he looks good when he's doing yeah. it, dog. Yo. He's the only prisoner <laughs> I know whose hair and beard is immaculate. Yeah. Nobody cares, but I mean, he carries it. What are you? What are you? What are you gonna do? Yeah. I mean, your hero gotta look good. I like hearing what you have to say about it. I like seeing your passion for the film. For me, the first time I watched it, I was just so thrown by like the editing and trying to keep up with the subtitles. Watching it on my on my TV is way easier than watching it on a theater screen and the subtitles are at the bottom of the thing and you're looking up and down and everything's moving so fucking fast. I'm like, I, I can't even keep up. And I tend to sit like mm. in the middle of the theater. And so I decided mm. for KGF Chapter Two, I'm gonna sit further back so I can absorb it a little bit more easily, so I can see the subtitles okay. and the visual at the same time with more ease. There were still parts where it was moving at a clip, and I'm like, whoa, okay, just, okay, we're <laughs> moving on. I wish there was a director's cut that added like maybe 20 more, 30 minutes, where you just get to linger, kind of like in the fashion of Blade Runner 2049. The thing is, there is so much more action in here than Blade Runner. Those three hours would still be riveting and still exciting. And watching it again, I realize like what my, what I find are faults in the film, which is there's a bit of a disconnect with the character at certain portions of the movie because it's so preoccupied with building up this legend of the guy. Heroic story from a removed third-person perspective with the narrator thing. At some points, like, I failed to stay connected to him because I'm busy looking at his glory and, and, and uh, admiring him <laughs> along with the narrator and everybody. And I'm like, okay. But then there are moments where it really shines and it connects me because it roots me through his uh, flashbacks and whatnot, remembering his mom, his childhood, remembering the baby that he was holding, the guy that died for him. You see the thought process happening a lot and so even though he's not saying much you're still able to stay connected to his thoughts the thing about it is at a certain point the plot starts to feel a little bit thin it's like there's not actually a lot of stages to this and so it's being fluffed out with a lot of songs and and talking about how cool he is and talking about how cool he is and then all these neat shots and whatever i'm like okay if that's what we're doing then let's fucking do that let's let the shots breathe and let's look at these beautiful ass shots you know, because okay. it's all okay. about the mm -hmm. artistry of the director and the DP working together and the shot design and the composition and everything like that. It's like, it's gorgeous. And then it flies by to the next thing. I'm like, if this is what we're here to do, let's let's take our time with it. You know, I, I get it. There's not a lot of story here. It's very simple. He enters, he defeats. I mean, obviously he has his yeah. internal arc with the whole thing because he came in with one objective. Then he realizes that has to advance to something else because there's people now that he realizes, like you said, he's got a heart. And again, there's not a lot of stages to it. Like, if you watch that second half of the movie, there's a lot of movie there where it's just singing about Rocky. But if you give me more time with the movie, it allows me to stay rooted in him, I guess, more closely, if that makes any sense. It's really early in the morning, no, no. just so you all know. Okay, so... It 
feels very advanced, but when you're looking to the beats from characters changing from, from scene to scene, it's, it's pretty simple, like, yeah. like you said. You know, he walks into a spot, beats everybody's ass, sets the example, dips. He's got an impossible task that gangsters are trying to give him to him. He goes there, gets it done, keeps it moving. You know, it's, it's. but there's all this other stuff that, that kind of like can distract you and take you away from, from the root of, of who Rocky is. Yeah. I can't understand a bit of that disconnect. Uh, and even more so, even what you're saying regarding the narrator, the, he'll drop in like these nuggets where he's just like, oh, and by the way, you know, another five years from now, he's gonna do this absolutely dope thing. Thing. Yeah. And it's like, it has nothing to do with the story what we're talking about right now. But it's just like, I guess it's a moment to let you know that his legend is even going to get even grander. Yeah. And it's not and it's not even really necessarily a hat tip because the one with the um, the foreshadowing with him at the bar when the 20 guys show up and litter the place with bullets, whatever. Like, that was a good chunk of time that we kind of like spit in that small flashback that, as of right now, doesn't connect. Yeah. Um, so the, the, so the, narrative, the narrative structure of the movie is much akin to of all things, uh, The Princess Bride. Now, for those of you who haven't seen The Princess Bride, uh, the film starts out with Fred Savage as a, as a boy. He's in bed, he's homesick, and his grandpa comes and decides to read him a story called The Princess Bride. And so what ha what, the, what narratively you're able to achieve is jumping forward past the boring shit because you have this, this present day thing you always get to come back to, talking about what's going on, and then you just jump forward in the story. Because sometimes mm. when you're writing a story, or you, like you just, like there's boring, it's, there are these things you feel like you have to explore just to mm -hmm. connect the dots. But then if you cut back to Fred Savage and his grandpa, then you can kind of just jump forward and, and get past all that bullshit that you don't want to deal with. Mm. And the movie's doing that. He where it's cutting back and forth to the guy who's telling the story and then he jumps forward just to wake the audience up. I feel like the director is really concerned about his audience getting bored and so that's why it keeps doing this all over the place. And I'm like, this is exciting stuff, dude. Like, you have a good foundation here. Relax. <laughs> <laughs> that's my that's my feeling when I'm watching this. It's like you got good stuff. Just chill out. It's fine. Like just have confidence in your story. I think that's where I get a little bit frustrated. Is like it feels like there's lack of confidence in the audience's commitment to the story when it's like you've already got something good. The people are there. They're gonna watch it. Relax. They'll watch the whole movie. It's good. I think that's my one thing. And the other thing is, and this this happens a lot for me with um, South Indian action films. I feel like he may, he was maybe challenged once or twice. He doesn't have a lot of hurdles in the movie. It's like he goes in and destroys. Waits, mm -hmm. destroys. Waits again. Should I do it? Should I destroy? Not, to destroy or to not destroy? Because it's got that sort of Shakespearean attitude to the whole thing with just how many moving parts there are and whatnot. I'm going to destroy. <laughs> you know? And so even, even at the very end, there was not a fight scene. He just came in and killed the guy, which is usurps your expectation because I think you're expecting there to be a fight scene, but he's just that badass that he just mm -hmm. took the dude out. But the problem there is that, like, again, he's not challenged. He's, he's literally just... This was my issue with 300, actually, was that the okay. Spartans just blew through the Persians. I'm like, I want to feel the harrowing experience of the Spartans. Like, they were such badass warriors. Mm -hmm. they, they, I want to feel them defeat a challenge, not just blow okay. through people for, for 90 minutes. You know what I mean? Okay. And so, okay, that's, fair. And so that's, what's, that's what was kind of happening here. I mean, it was fun. Don't get me wrong. It was damn exciting to watch all the cool shit, people flying, and how much of a hero he was. It takes its breathers, not in terms of, like, the cutting, but in terms of, like, narratively what it's deciding to do. It takes breathers to allow me to, like, take a break from that, because 300 was just, like, straightforward. We're going through the Persians yeah. for 90 minutes. Whereas this, it's, like, kind of jumping around story-wise, going from here to here. Mm -hmm. And so it allows me to take a break from what's going on in order to come back to him just destroying people and plowing through them again and appreciating just how fucking awesome he is. But I just would have liked it more if you gave it a little bit of John McClane. Just a little bit, you know? I know it's not that kind of story, but just a little bit of John McClane. <laughs> yeah, yeah you, 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 brought, you brought up a really good point, and that is, like, we, we've been built up to, to you want this ending. Like, we've seen that, that Rocky got hands, right? Yeah. And, he's, <laughs> he's, and he's nice with it. Yeah. And in hindsight, now that you've said that, I think I would have rather wished to seen him do something with Garuda. Garuda, I think, I, uh, I think I'm think yeah. i saying his name wrong. But the bad guy. Um, yeah, the main bad guy. Yeah, yeah, the bad guy. The problem is, is that we didn't get a chance to see Garuda actually like fight anybody. It's just his presence. His presence is what's so, is what's so dangerous and what he can do when 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 properly uh, motivated. But Garuda did best him. There is one time when Rocky lost, uh, and that is when he set up to try and kill Garuda uh, at the uh, unveiling of the, of the statue. Rocky got his ass handed to him, not physically, but embarrassed. He was embarrassed. 
embarrassed. Yeah. Because it was he. Yeah, that's fair. You, that, that's, he's the guy that gets stuff done. I'm glad you brought that and up. He used it. I, I'm glad you brought that up because that was that was a major setback in the story. I kind of forgot about. He had a major setback. That was really the only one. That was the only setback. Yeah, yeah it was the only one. Yeah. <laughs> no, but you're right. He blew through everybody else. Like you know, twenty man, thirty man. It don't matter. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 I'm of two minds about the way he executed Garuda because it's like, on the one hand, that's just cool. Because, like, he came out of nowhere. Like, an, you never see the hero take down the villain of the story like that. The only time I can think of that I experienced something like that was in um, Equilibrium. A very Western film kind of thing, like Old West, where you got, you know, good, the bad, the ugly. And it's just this amp, this it's this amp up of uh, energy, expectation, excitement of who's gonna win in this uh, what do you call it, Mexican standoff? And then ka-chow! It's like one shot. <laughs> Who who's still yeah. standing? And then of course Clint Eastwood yeah. walks off into the sunset. So it has that sort of feel to it. You don't really see that anymore because it feels anticlimactic. I think it was actually exciting because they sl they slowed everything down. There's like so much slow motion in that moment, which is another thing I want to talk about for a hot sec. I am typically not a fan of ramping, like fast, slow, fast, slow, fast, slow. The way they did that. That here I felt like was way more palatable for some odd reason most of the time. It's like it was allowing, oddly enough, while it was cutting so quick, it allowed slow motion to breathe, if that makes any yeah. sense. Yeah. It was, it was it was our moments to, it was our moments to breathe, but it was the slow motion. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like like there was said. there was a very poignant moment when the, the kid crosses the line. I'm looking back on it now, and I guess there is this sort of buildup of Rocky's confidence in the situation because he's like, no, no, I just I gotta do this over here and then he's just feeling this tug this direction because he sees what's happening with the people and it starts out with that kid getting killed the kid crossed the line the mom crosses the line and he doesn't do anything you know he just stands there which is counter to what he does with the old man so that's a, there's a little arc over there when the kid gets killed and you just see the ball drop and it just slows down that was a moment that i really liked it almost got me emotional because it slowed down and it's like it just allowed me to appreciate what's going on here in the stakes how these people are being treated they're slaves you know, they don't matter. So they'll, they'll just take them out like nothing. And I just wish the movie did more of that along the way. It was just like, yeah. that because that it's poignant, you know? I think the only time that I saw the camera maybe on sticks is what during the interview, right? When the narrator's talking. Other than that, like there's no real time for you to breathe that's not based in camera movement, slow motion, or, or quick takes, right? Like the entire film. Like there's, there's, can you name another, in another shot where it's on sticks? No, other than when the narrator like, is talking? But it's like and, when, you, and when I mean on sticks, I mean the camera yeah. being stationary yeah. and they're just actually just letting the film roll and let it breathe. Yeah, you, you mentioned something important just now, which is the editing. The movie's cut together like a film trailer. When you're watching <laughs> that for three minutes, that's one thing. You know, because like a, a movie trailer is between, you know, a one and five minutes. And so when you're watching that for, for three minutes, it's like, okay, that's your brain is set up to take that and then you move on. But when you're doing that for two hours and 30 minutes of just and then like this trippy editing and whatnot. Whoa. <laughs> like, God dang. Like, let it let it breathe. But, you know, you were I feel like I need a cigarette. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I need to be like, was it good for you? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, like, wow. But you mentioned you, you mentioned something, which is like how what, you're like, well, how big is the budget on this? And I feel like the editing saves the movie, I think, in a number of ways, because I, I think that perhaps there were a lot of shots. Don't get me wrong. But the way it's it's spliced together, I almost feel like it was from a producer standpoint, it was compensating for what was otherwise missing. If that makes any sense, like maybe they didn't get everything they needed, to, all the coverage they needed. They didn't. Let me clarify with an example. So you watch okay. uh, you watch something like like Taken with Liam Neeson, okay. right? In the movie, we're supposed to believe that Liam Neeson is a badass, right? And so he, he's got the acting chops, but maybe he doesn't necessarily have the fighting chops. So how do we get around that? We get around that by having quick inserts and chopping it up really fast. And okay. so I feel like that kind of thing was happening a lot here where you have these quick inserts and it's chopping up to get around actually showing a full display of fight scenes like the way you would do in a Hong Kong martial arts film. Okay, you, all right. You, you get the contrast? I'm with you. And so I think yes. that was happening quite a bit here where, okay, we got this, we got this, we got this. Okay, if we could just stitch this together, it'll feel like a believable action sequence. That's really what it all comes down to is, can we sell this as a believable moment? 
That's all that counts at the end of the day. Whether you're using miniatures, visual effects, special effects, stump people, all that counts at the end of the day is can we sell this? That's what's happening a lot is like it's just chopping up really quick and then flashing in and out, black, black back to screen, black back to screen, you know, like, like it was like a movie trailer in order to like stitch this story together. That's what I was sort of feeling. I can't tell if it's a compensation or if it is just deliberate, if that makes any sense. Like I don't even know if they knew how big this movie was going to be. That's another interesting point. Yeah. You know, okay. Yeah, I can see that. It kind of just took the world by storm in India. It was like, this just blew everybody away. And I was like, oh my God, what is this? And, <laughs> and it's also a sign of the times for me. I see this and I'm like, I'm definitely of the old guard. You know, I'm officially of the old guard because we talked about like long pointy shots, like, you know, what was it? Um, um, 2001. Uh, <laughs> yeah, 2001. Dances with Wolves. Yeah. And now I realize, I feel like I'm the old man in the rocking chair, right? I appreciate this new style of filmmaking, I do. And it is an art, it, without a doubt, in order to make something like this. I'm, I'm really impressed. But I am also realized that this is for a different time, right, for, for me, because that was like watching TikTok. It's dope, yeah. you know, but I'm just like, wow, I my brain is like, I need a moment <laughs> to kind of to kind of process everything, and and th this this isn't a slight. It's just the art has has progressed in a way that just maybe a little bit a little bit out of my element. I'm sure like today's today's viewers who have that shorter, quicker attention span and has to have that dopamine rush. I'm sure this is like absolute full blown candy for them. Like this is probably like doing a line of coke. I'm not telling you to do a line of coke, but it's just like full blown. To give it all to me. It feels like a water hose was opened up I just wanted a sip of water I'm so used to drinking water out of like you know you know a little thing and somebody came with a fire hose and was like here's your content and I'm just like ah, 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 I can't. wait a minute it's too much ah, but it's good but ah. yeah. so I feel like it's it's starting to get a little bit out of my 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 safety zone, you know. I feel like I I feel like I watch that film. And I I feel like I should have had a safe word. Like you know, it's popcorn time, you know. Like it's popcorn time. It's popcorn time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you're giving me too much goodness right now. Yeah, I think that um, it's also you, you know you're dealing with another challenge, which is the subtitles. Yeah, no, that's very true. You know, that is very true. Um, yeah. but I do feel like there is a switch that we've experienced, and I think that that switch is uh, due to Michael Bay. Um, ever since, I don't, I don't know if it was, because I, I never properly watched Bad Boys, but what I watched of it, the editing didn't feel anywhere near as intense as The Rock. The Rock, okay. if you go back and watch that, it cuts like every five seconds, and back then, that felt quick. Now that's standard. Yeah. It's standard. To, yeah. It's standard to like that is slow by today's standards. It's only progressed to be more intense from there, where you have to be cutting off, and otherwise your audience gets bored and checks out. And so that's why I appreciate uh, directors like Denis Villeneuve, or whatever his name is, who directed Arrival and Blade Runner twenty forty nine and mm. um, and Dune, the new Dune movie. Uh, I appreciate mm -hmm. his style because it it's very it contrasts this completely. This also kind of gave me Dune vibes. This came before the new Dune film. Thinking of Dune, I'm like, oh God, I, I just wish that there was a slower version of this movie that had all this goodness mm -hmm. and just like, let me let me see it. Taking it away before I can even see it. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, I, cause, like, cause it's almost like a bunch of cool shit going by on a train. Like, oh, that's... Uh, <laughs> <you know? laughs> yeah, yeah. But yeah. overall, I enjoyed it way more than I did the first time. I think I was so preoccupied with trying to get all the data, I was tired by the end of the movie, you know? Um, yes. But but this time, I'm like, oh, okay. Like, I'm able to appreciate it way more. And so I'm excited. It's got me excited to go into the second one now. And so, and I guess I'll do a rewatch with you after uh, it hits streaming. Please, man. Yeah. yeah, you gotta call me for that one, man. Absolutely. Yeah. So, you guys, thanks so much for hanging out. Hopefully you enjoyed this uh, conversation and reaction. Really appreciate y'all. If you're watching this on Patreon, thanks so much for supporting us here. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button, bell icon, all notifications, and vote the stuff so that YouTube know you enjoy what you watched. I'm Jabby Kawai. This is... Hey, it's your boy, Sintel. Peace out.